Okay, now I, I'm gonna take a look, a uh, deeper look at uh, both treasures. I'm going to begin by uh, the metal one, which is isotropic. So I apply this preset, for instance. And uh, now I'm gonna apply the standard presets on both top and the strong presets on the both of the bottom. Okay, and to compare, you see here I have an ambient at 90%. And here I, I have an ambient ice at 70%, and I have a diffuse at 42%, and here I have a very low and dark diffuse. The main difference uh, relies in the ambient and diffuse um, proportion and strength. Uh, make a small render of the of them. Okay. These are kind of uh, rusty metals uh, here. Uh, this, there is a deformation because I have not adapted. Uh, it's the, the UV map is basically stretched, so it is normal that this is stretched. Uh, you can, we can eventually change the tile uh, to to change this. So um, let's have a look component by by component. Ambient is the same as usually. Bump is the same as usually, and diffuse too. Displacement changes a lot because now you have everything which is related to uh, I'm going to increase this to material related displacement. So this is your first displacement strength. Okay, and when I say material related, I mean uh, the surface defects of the material. Everything which is texture related displacement relies on the texture, um, so that the defects you see here on the image are the defects you see here on the map and it has the same tile and you are your um, OPD uh, so offset pattern displacement component and your offset pattern displacement is the way you usually use displacement meaning that you usually use them to add some nice patterns on a, and or to displace strongly the surface. The first displacement are displaced points too, but very with very very limited amplitude. Okay, and this displacement is the classical displacement we, which can reach strong amplitudes of displaced points. All right, uh, the normal mapping is the same as usually, except that you can now dial it. Opacity, uh, here you can plug a map, it will work as usually, except that if you are using set more reflective, uh, you will have to patch it in the, using the opacity management, uh, as mentioned in the pre previous um, presentation. And uh, smoothing works the same as usually. Uh, Specular, here relies a strong difference, it's in the way Specular is and handled. In Speculart, you have two dials. You have glossiness, which will work um, as usually, and you have isotropic spread, meaning that when you they, they work together, uh, when you increase the glossiness, the size of your highlight will decrease, and when you increase the spread, the size of, of your highlight will increase, but not the same way. They are not just say the same formulas behind that. So uh, you can, um, using this uh, shape, you highlight very precisely. I'm going to show you, for instance, just on this sphere. And I'm going to take a very small isotropic spread with a, a specular around 70%, for instance, to have a starting point. And I render this, and you have these small dots, let's say, of light, okay? So I guess we want to increase the size of the dots. So if we want, I'm going to, to let the render TDL. If I want to, to change the size of the dots, I want to make them bigger. I have two ways to do that. I can decrease glossiness or I can increase isotropic spread. First, I'm going to increase isotropic spread. And now I make a second render. Isotropic spread will furthermore, um, how to explain that? Isotropic spread will tend to send some of the reflection map in the highlights or on the surface around the highlights. Um, uh, an effect which glossiness does not uh, present. So 
uh, we want it even bigger so this time we're going to increase gloss and uh, increase isotropic spread and decrease glossiness the isotropic spread is just the way that the highlights spread in an isotropic way around the glossiness uh, initial point okay our focus around it uh, so I have increased it once again and decreased glossiness and now you see you begin to have very strong highlights and very large one um, the thing you can do there is to darken the color a bit of the strength of the specular color okay uh, it will allow you to decrease the global strength of it and this give you once again another impression maybe the best thing is to compare them now in the render uh, in the render editor I'm going to let the calculus go to the till it's end okay so a render editor and compare with a toggle 1415 okay toggle uh, toggle you see you change your spread around the initial point that that's the way it's working that's the way it allows you to shape your highlights i'm going to change my this one for instance you see how how it is shaping the, the influence of just glossiness and isotropic spread uh, if you get uh, lost in uh, in the specular settings you can always put here 17 here 0.1 and here 17 and you should uh, come back to uh, uh, an average uh, reflection state i wanted to go now to um to the reflection because for this model uh, the reflection map is very important i'm going to render a first a first state of uh, the metal okay and I'm going to change my just my reflection map just a reflection map to see the difference uh, here in the reflection I have this uh, map I can go for another map for example a warm a warmer one okay uh, I should have selected all the surfaces okay now in the if I hit map in the environment map you got this map and if I render again and I compare the two renders I will not have the same impression uh, on one single render this is not obvious but when you begin to compare in the render editor the two last renders you see the, your metal look less shiny and uh, maybe a little bit warmer too so remember the environment map will uh, change will change a lot uh, the final impression that you get so remember that uh, uh, before setting up perfectly a specular things that think that it interacts a lot with environment map I can keep try to use this one which is a really saturated one and a, a color, colored map and immediately you have a, another impression and the impression the change is even more visible in this one uh, if I go for a black and white one with a kind of fractals on it I will still have another impression okay um i go no, let the render go till the end okay and go back in the render editor and compare maybe the last one and the previous one in toggle model okay and here is the orange and green map in it seems to have low influence on this one and strong influence on this one if i go for the render 22 this time okay this um, this map the map i use there is 
not really convenient for this kind of saturated metal uh, actually on this shape. It could be fine on the terrace, but on the sphere, it doesn't present the right feature. features. Here it could be okay. And if I go for the 21, 24 and 21, you see it. it's, we I just changed the map. I didn't change anything else. And yet you have really very different impressions. So um, remember, uh, before completely setting up uh, your specular, try eventually to change the map and already find the one who, which will uh, help you to reach the right setting you want. Okay, this was concerning um, the environment map. I think this one is the most standard and that's the one I'm using in most of the presets. If you use this one, for instance, um, it's uh, more gray level, so all your reflection will be decreased. And that's the thing that we have to, you have to remember. I'm go back to a single material now. Okay, uh, so I presented all these elements. Uh, and in reflection, in reflection, you have the opportunity to um, perfectly uh, define the contribution of your environment map and retrace contributions. So uh, for this, sorry, for this, uh, you have a lot of parameters. Actually, no, not that much. You have all these elements which are playing on map 2. Map 2 is your constant base of reflection that will never change um, even if you move this, um, even if you move your ray trace contribution. It will increase of course if you set more reflective because set more reflective is applied on the sum of the ray tracing and the reflection map. But if you change your ray trace contribution, what is going to happen is that the strength of your reflection map one will decrease up to zero percent when the rays will be zero. And this will be added to your second map. The result of the reflection map one, which is now zero because I have ray trace contribution at 100 percent, is added to this map. So if you decide for instance, to put this map very strong. You will see it anyway because uh, it is the base, the, the really base of your reflection. And I keep this slow because um, I wanted the shadow to be a bit energy conservative um, when increasing ray tracing. So where I am? Uh, no, this is my strength. This is not my color. Sorry. So I apply a strong strength on the map too, and to see it um, to see it better, I, I take a green a green contribution for it. Okay, and now you see how and where map two applies. Okay, what you see here is map two, and you see that the the reflection. Uh, map is um, is sent over the highlights much more than on the rest of the surface. Okay, uh, this is a particularity of the shadow one. Uh, now, if I okay, I'm com I keep a green one for this one, and I'm adding a pink for the reflection map one. Okay, now I have the mix of the two. And the green being stronger than the pink because I have not set it up at the maximum. Okay, now I have a balanced. I have a balanced uh, mix of the two. Okay, and in general, my map one is on a white base, but almost new. Okay, and now. Using this, I'm injecting only reflection map one in the reflection. That is why I go for a pink color. I wanted to mention this because in the general rules, the way it has been conceived to be used, you have to keep this slow. But if you want, for instance, to have a really purely added reflection map with your ray tracing, purely added, without decreasing, without any f uh, feedback loop, 
be between a reflection and rate risk contribution, uh, the feedback loop, which will decrease your rate rate, uh, your sorry, environment map when rate tracing is augmenting, then you just have to set reflection map 1 to 0, and then you can set it this 1 to 0, and now every, your, your full reflection will be driven only by this, and when you change rate trace contribution, the reflection map contribution will never change, it will be just an addition, okay, and instead of a loop uh, trying to conserve energy. And this is the same for metal 2. The, the reflection brick is built the same for metal 2. Okay, uh, I'm going to come back to a more classical... It, it was how to handle a reflection on it. I'm going to come back to the, to the, the, the classical initial preset. I was on metal 1 and this was, I guess, yes, this metal. So now it allows me to reload all my parameters. Uh, that's the focus on reflection, so take reflection map 2, which is your base, and is basically low, and it's added with reflection map 1, with a strength depending of ray trace contribution. All the results of this is multiplied by a something which set it more reflective. Okay, so if I have ray trace contribution at 0, I add this map with this strength, with, with this map with this strength, and multiply it by this. Oh, add add uh, add this percentage. Uh, and here, you see, I set it more reflective, and I see much more the environment map on it. And yet, I see the features of the environment map, but I don't see <coughs> I don't see clear details. I, I see there is a bit of environment around it, but it's not obvious which one it is. Uh, if I take a forest, crisp forest, uh, is it on this one that I've loaded it yet? If I take a crisp forest here, it is crisp. So I really begin to guess, you know, I have my clouds here, I have my trees here, and I have my my uh, grass, yes, my grass here. That's maybe, uh, maybe it can be what you want. Okay, but maybe it's not. You don't. Maybe you just don't want to be that clear. So go for something like that. Okay, when which is blurred and not crisp, and you see. Okay, I have a sky above, and I have a, a maroon, brown, a brown, a brown floor below. But all this is not that clear, and you can go for. Uh, <clears throat> this one, for instance. <coughs> okay, I am in a city and I have very clear buildings. And um, maybe uh, I don't want to be that clear in terms of environment, okay? So I am going to use uh, maybe this warm, dark, dark, blurred city. And no, I have a feeling of that there are some light variation on it and and there is a small environment and this is not strong why because the map itself is less strong and less contrast contrasted by this um, than this one in this case what you can do is go in reflection map and increase the color on it you see it's just a blurred um, city city uh, sunset Sun, no, sunset. It's just a blurred sunset city. Okay, now I have increased the strength of the reflection map because the map itself is pretty dark. I can, and I'm, so I'm increasing it via the color here, and I can also increase it here. I, I can also increase it here, okay. You have many dials to, to manage to find your, um, <coughs> to find your balance, okay. And now the environment becomes more clear. And what uh, is important to note is um, the distance influence of on your perception of this environment. Here I was very close. Now I'm going to go very far and render again. And now that I'm far, uh, the image is more clear. Maybe on this one, this is not obvious. I'm gonna take this one, which is more, a little bit more crisp. Okay, I render, and 
this is the blurred version of the environment. And yet, I guess very well um, what other buildings are. And here, if I take the crisp and uh, the crisp version of it, okay, it's the mirror of the city, you know. I don't change my setting. I just get my camera closer, not that fast, maybe, and re-render. And on the close distance, this is less obvious. You know, I don't know if it's uh, for me. This is obvious. So uh, take take care. Um, to watch your prop uh, at different distances. And I think the best is to use blurred maps anyway. Um, <clears throat> maybe like this one too. And uh, this one should be pretty strong in terms of reflection. Okay, it is strong. And render. Okay. So here you have this small light variation signaling, saying that there, there is something which uh, produce light variation on the surface. So there is an environment around. And if I diffuse, if I, if I go further and I render from, from far, okay, you feel there is something, but you don't, uh, you cannot say clearly what it is. That is what I would strongly advise to use uh, crisp maps, except if you really want to see something around like this. Oh, I am in the forest, but the thing is that if you're not in a forest, it's a problem. Okay, I undo the change of the map. So that's what I wanted to say about a reflection. I choose, choose blurred maps if you can. Play with the set more reflective parameter or directly with the strength of the map. And remember the set, set more reflective is added to ray trace contribution. So here, for instance, I can increase my ray trace contribution, let's say one, up to 100%. At 100%, fake reflection map one will switch off. Uh, and all the power of the reflection map will be included in the reflection map two. Okay, and now if I render with an 100% ray trace contribution, the thing is that you see the torus Reflecting, reflecting on your prop, you see the, the sphere here reflecting there, and I guess this part here is the reflection of the turbis there, okay? And uh, why? It's just because now um, your reflection is based on the sum of this map one plus, which, which, is a, which has a very, very low contribution, okay, plus <coughs> this uh, this uh, ray trace contribution, the strength of the ray trace contribution is limited to one, but you have the right to play with it to have much more stronger uh, reflections. See, up, set it to two, and immediately the reflections are really much stronger. This uh, playing with these settings would allow you to globally, roughly conserve energy here but increase um, your reflections, your imaging, your, your possibility to make uh, the image of your surrounding props. Uh, now let's have a look at on a distance, uh, on a large distance, what it, how it looks like. Uh, I would say, okay, <laughs> this is maybe a little bit too much, too much reflective. I am lucky to have things around my sphere because if I have nothing around my sphere, okay, move away, and I render again, uh, this is a pretty flat metal. So what I would do in this case is maybe to go in reflection and enhance and increase, sorry, the contribution of map to my, my base of reflection, okay, of, or eventually decrease ray trace contribution. and. Now that I've re-injected a lot of power, I decrease the reflective part. I can keep ray trace at this value, okay. And now you find back the reflection map, okay, the, the, the variation of the reflection map, and you see the reflection of the props. Maybe we can load another map so that it is more visible, just for tests, okay. Now you have the reflection map. And you have the reflected props here, 
okay? And so that if you have nothing in your scene, you still have the impression that you have something around your metal and so that it is a metal. That was for the reflection part, smoothing. I guess I uh, don't have a lot of things to say. Uh, specular, so specular and reflection closely interact together. Uh, the tiling, there are several tile systems and UV maps. Uh, I have nothing more to say about UV maps. So, no, um, what about it? I think it's over for the fast presentation of Metal One. Okay, one thing you, the three things you have to remember is reflection. Okay, reflection map is generally low and ref reflection map 2 is the base and low reflection map 1 is high and added to reflection map 2 but reflection map 1 is switched off when increasing ray trace contribution and the sum of all of this is multiplied by a set more reflective parameter you can increase your ray contribution with this dial and also eventually with the ray strength by removing the limits and you can <coughs> once your ray trace contribution is set you can still increase the strength of your uv uh, of your mapped reflection by increasing map one strength <coughs> but then take care that if you set more reflected too high then you might uh, just uh, overglow let's have a look I'm gonna make a, a render. I don't see. Uh, I don't see the artifacts. Uh, I'll show you the artifacts later on. When there is a, um, when there is a lot. Oh, I only see, only see a little bit of them. When when everything is too high, you have some artifacts uh, because you render color higher than one, and the software just doesn't like it at all.